Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Okay, happy Friday, everybody. In the last 36 hours, multiple Western, including Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, and Financial Times, as well as Chinese publications, have reported U.S. and Chinese negotiators may be close to resolving an impasse in months-long talks on whether Chinese companies. Can remain on American capital markets. The U.S. has demanded that Chinese companies and auditors make their financial audits available for inspection every three years by the Public Company Accounting and Oversight Board, something required of most other foreign firms. Chinese firms have enjoyed sidestepping this rule for many years, with pragmatic U.S. regulators winking at the practice. But as these fair weather days gave way to a more stormy era of competition and deep mistrust, Washington discontinued the leniency. As for Beijing, it does not want to allow foreign regulators to inspect Chinese company audits. Arguing that it needs to protect state secrets. Indeed, earlier this month, we remember five state-owned Chinese companies said that they would voluntarily delist from U.S. exchanges. Though it is curious why ostensibly private companies would possess state secrets. At any rate, for months now, both sides appeared unwilling to back down, exacerbating market concerns that many Chinese ADRs, American Depository Receipts, would eventually be forced off U.S. exchanges. But now, several outlets report a breakthrough towards a deal may be near. Quote. Chinese regulators have instructed major accounting firms to prepare to bring the audit work papers of the U.S. listed Chinese companies to Hong Kong, where they can be reviewed by the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, according to a person who asked not to be identified, as the discussions are private. End quote. End quote. The China Securities Regulatory Commission recently informed some accounting firms and companies about the plan. The people said, adding that U.S. accounting inspectors could arrive in Hong Kong as soon as next month. A final agreement can only be reached if the U.S. side determines that it has full access to the audit working papers. American securities regulators, meanwhile, have said that they need full access to companies' unredacted audit papers before they will deem China in compliance. End quote. Some analysts remain skeptical that a deal can be reached. However, quote, "We have been here before with reports, if I remember correctly, that popped PRC stocks soon after a state council meeting that tried to goose economic confidence. Perhaps this time they really are close, but I think skepticism is still warranted." End quote. After these optimistic reports first appeared in financial media. The Nasdaq Golden Dragon China Index jumped 6.3 percent. Next up, drought woes continue in many southern regions of the country, and poor Chongqing now has an outbreak to add to its fires and water shortages. Okay, so there is some、uh, construction in the room next to my office, so I've moved into a meeting room to continue with the recording. There's a bit of an echo in here, so please、uh, forgive the sound quality. In a brief moment of meteorological mercy, parts of southwest China's Sichuan saw about two inches of rain yesterday, and Chongqing reported light showers. More rain is expected today, Friday. While this may bring some desperately needed cooling. The severe power shortages and drought conditions will take much longer to reverse. Other regions have not been as fortunate. 104 counties, districts, and cities in Jiangxi Province, for example, have the highest level drought warnings today. Conditions for China's largest freshwater lake, the Poyang Lake Basin, continue to worsen, with emergency teams digging trenches to connect what fresh water is left to critical rice-growing regions. We remember that Goldman Sachs warned on Monday that rice harvests. Will be at greatest risk if the severe weather is prolonged. The six areas suffering drought—Sichuan, Chongqing, Hubei, Henan, Jiangxi, and Anhui—accounted for almost half of China's rice output last year. 
The record heat wave in Sichuan is drying up reservoirs and crippling hydropower stations, the largest source of renewable energy for the province. This hit to power generation in the normally waterway rich region of Sichuan has brought inter regional power sharing policy under the spotlight. Quote, Sichuan exports nearly a third of its electricity to other provinces. It supplies power to Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Shanghai, Chongqing, Hunan, and Jiangxi. The arrangement is based on framework agreements among provincial governments that are hard to change. In the event of electricity shortages, local Sichuan grids have no authority to retain power for local use. Although the province has an overall surplus of energy in normal times, there will be a large shortage by 2025. End quote. In terms of economic impact of the power shortages, this week CITIC Securities Co. analysts estimated that power rationing will cut one percentage point from China's industrial added value growth in August. Some commentators argue that the power shortages should be viewed as a local challenge, which will have little effect on the national economy. Quote, the fundamental reason why Sichuan is rationing energy is its dependency on hydropower, which accounted for 81.6% of the province's power supply last year. However, hydropower only accounted for 16.1% of the country's power generation last year. Thus, diminished hydropower in several regions won't threaten the national power supply. As heat waves are coming to an end in some provinces, residential electricity use is declining. Government policies will ensure the supply of coal as well as electricity. Stability of energy supply has been one of the main policy themes since December's annual Central Economic Work Conference. End quote. Moving into COVID concerns, as we have said, Chongqing has implemented compulsory testing measures for millions of residents and some parts of the city are in lockdown. Another mega city, Shanghai, is also a little nervous today with two straight days of community cases. The next 48 hours will be critical for the city. In a piece of good news, however, the recent outbreaks in Hainan province, Tibet and Xinjiang appear to have been brought under control. Next up, the housing crisis, and this is quite a development. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to hit the like button. And for anyone who wants to go the extra mile and help me keep China updates sustainable, continue producing these videos every day. Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee links are in the description below. As always, thank you so much everybody for the ongoing support. UK-based Reuters reports today in an exclusive piece that some of China's state-backed financial institutions, including state-owned banks, are pushing bank... Oh, there is a thunderstorm outside right now, a little bit of rain hopefully for the south, are pushing back on Beijing's calls to support the embattled property sector due to concerns about the impact of such exposure on their balance sheets. In recent weeks, Chinese authorities have held multiple closed-door meetings, which banks and other financial institutions were encouraged to support fundraising for developers. Indeed, we have been following leaks of these meetings. If Reuters sources are accurate, it would appear that some of these institutions, even state-owned ones, do not want to touch property developers. Two unnamed sources speaking to the outlet express that, without explicit financial backstop from Beijing, senior executives at some of the institutions are wary of engaging with crisis hit developers, as it risks bringing them down too. Quote, the reluctance of some Chinese lenders shows the challenges and limited options for Beijing to help revive the sector. Officials at two state-owned banks and three state-backed asset managers said that they have been trimming their holdings of property bonds since early this year, despite several rounds of regulatory window guidance, verbal instructions from regulators, they received to support the sector. End quote. If true, this is quite incredible. Though it shouldn't be too surprising, analysts have warned for years now that the inflated housing market was largely maintained through moral hazard. Quote, the role banks are supposed to play in achieving Beijing's growth targets requires that moral hazard underpin the banking system. This moral hazard in turn exacerbates systemic risk, which, in turn, requires that moral hazard be further extended. In this type of highly pro-cyclical system, 
reversing any part of the process causes the whole process to reverse. End quote. The question is, will there be enough political will to convince all the actors in the system, developers, banks, investors, home buyers, etc., that the music isn't over yet before they start diving for the limited number of chairs? And we remember that, according to Nomura, Chinese developers have only delivered around 60% of homes they sold in advance, which represents most new homes, between 2013 and 2020. Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.